All right, Shalom. So before I get going, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Wahakwadash Raka. All right, double honors to the elders over at the Great Millstone who rule well, Shalom, and also Shalom to the rest of the elders of the Israelite nation who rule well, you know, and are following the true doctrine of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, Shalom wa barakim, that means peace and blessings to the hopeful elect men of the Israelite nation, teaching his truth out in the four corners of the earth where we have been scattered. And also shalom to the rest of the Israelite um, nation. Those are the one third, um, the men, women, and children um, who have forsaken this world and have come back to their true heritage, you know, which is the Bible, you know, the true doctrine they're in. Um, and before I get going to the lesson, um, this message is specifically to you Israelites, you Israelites being you um, so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, and so-called Native American Indian people um, scattered abroad as well. Um, all those names I just went through um, that aren't Israel are all bywords that you live under. You think that you are, but in fact, you're the Israelites, you know, and being an Israelite, you know, this book, you know, which is called the Bible. It's actually your book of history. It's your history book. You know, you can find about your lineage, your heritage, your forefathers, you know, and ultimately um, what took, has taken place for you to be in the current conditions or situations that you are, that you see amongst yourselves today. Um, and again, this is your book of heritage. This is your heritage. The words of this book, the words of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son is your heritage that you should know and that you should keep, you know, and that you need to come back to ultimately. And then most importantly, it's a book of instruction. You know, the book is instruction for the Israelites, for the Israelites to obtain life, um, reality, and all that they might be seeking for, you can find out how to do so and how to obtain, and if it's actually good for you within these scriptures. And that's the reason why, you see, the men um, of our nation, you know, teaching, making these YouTube videos, um, out on the corners, the street corners, you know, preaching the word, you know, that's what we're doing. We're bidding, you know, the nation of Israel back to the marriage, you know, back to who you are, back to your heritage. And most importantly, you know, selling the elect of the nation. So they come back, you know, and we fulfill, we fulfill, um, what has always been and what it was always to be of our nation and, um, you know, carry, carry forward in our righteous estate, you know, which is being a people put on high above all nations of the earth instead of being people oppressed, downstruck and trodden over, ultimately looking as a, to be who we are today, which is a third world people who is the butt of all jokes and, you know, pretty much just rot it out. So, without further ado, we go hop into the lesson. We go hop in our, get to our first scripture, which is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. It reads, Envy thou not the oppressor. And we'll um, just start here with it. Envy thou not the oppressor. So, this is again a book of instruction. And these are some words to, of instruction that you need to consider those of you of the Israelite nation, those of you who are looking to obtain to, um, actually get the value or the benefits out of being who you are, which is an Israelite, you know, being an Israelite comes with being the chosen people of the heavenly father, being the chosen people of the heavenly father comes with you needing to follow in his statutes and judgments, his thoughts, his, his statute laws and judgments. You see, and knowing what they are and how they apply to you. All right. Envy thou not the oppressor. So you're not supposed to envy your oppressors, man. And to understand this, you got to understand what it is to be oppressed, which is the um, base word of oppressor. Oppressors oppress. All right. So we got the Google definition here of the word oppress pulled up. Oppress. Oppress. And it means to keep someone, you know, or people 
and subservience and hardship. All right. Keep in subservience. Subservience would be from that root word there, sub, you know, sub to be under. A submarine is underwater. Subliminal is a understanding that's under something. So whenever you see the word sub, it means to be under. So subservience, we're serving as under, you know, not on high, not as God's chosen people who are supposed to be put on high. We've been put into subservience and hardship, ultimately, because we ourselves did not hearken unto the words of the Heavenly Father that Moses gave unto us, you know. He said, if we listen to the words of the Heavenly Father, we will be put on high above all nations of the earth. But if we didn't hearken unto the words of the Lord, we would be put through these curses and we would be put under foot. So we are oppressed today, ultimately because of our doing, but it's people who the Lord has used to do so and put us under. Keep someone in subservience and hardship. The hardships are our lifestyles, the way that we live, the stuff that we went through, the deaths that we see, slavery, you know, being destroyed as a people. Being destroyed as a nation, the, the, the Northern Kingdom being the so-called Latinos and Native American Indian people having their land taken from them, you know, by the so-called white man. You see, when they came and discovered this new world and decided to take it, you see, that hardship was taken. We was um, raped. Our women were raped. Our men were robbed and raped as well. Disease, you know being killed with weapons we never seen before. All of these are hardships and stuff we currently go through. You know, our children not having structured families, not knowing who they are, you know, um, no role models, no money, barely eating. All of these hardships we go through because we're oppressed. Keep someone in subservience and hardship. And it says, especially by the unjust exercise of authority so to oppress someone you have to have authority you see and it's an unjust exercise of that authority and when you go into authority it goes into power right power to influence or command thought those are the people who are setting laws who are setting the standards of life who are Controlling the TV stations, controlling the radios, controlling what you think, what you see, how you see it. You know, always seeing your people on the news as these dumb, ignorant people who have no clue what's going on. Always seeing your people, um, people that look like you of the Israelite nation, uh, promoting some adultery in their music videos or robbing and stealing and killing in our movies and shows. Always power to influence or command thought, opinion, or behavior. Those opinions, you know, um, black people are lazy. That power to influence that thought. If you want to keep something from a black man, put it in the book. And we obviously hate books. You see, it's crazy. And it says, or behavior. Um, they showing all these, um, these men, these effeminate men. And all these men thinking it's okay to be effeminate. They dyeing their hair pink and purple. You know what I'm saying? They wearing the tightest jeans they could possibly wear. They painting their fingernails. Power to influence or command thought, opinion, or behavior. You see, that's what that authority is. That's that exercising of unjust authority. Unjust authority is them knowing who we are, knowing what's bad for us, and feeding it to us because it's in their power to do so. It's within their authority. And it's keeping us in subservience and hardship. It's keeping us underfoot, keeping our people knocked down. So that is what it means to oppress all right, let's go back to the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 3 and 31 says, Envy thou not the oppressor. So we understand what it is to oppress. The oppressor are the people in that position of power to do so. You see? Envy thou not the oppressor. Therefore, you don't envy nothing they have. And we know our oppressors are the people who are in control of this world right now. You know, the world was given into the hand of the wicked. Job 9 and 24. Who is the world in control of right now? The so-called white man, you know, who is called Esau or Edom inside the Bible. He was ruling the world. He's that authority. He's who's putting 
all of these things in line to keep us oppressed, to keep us in hardship, to keep us subservient, because he wants to keep the Israelites not knowing who, he, who they are so they can stay under, so they can stay a third world people, third world class people, and so he can stay on top. But you're not, you not to envy those people. You're not supposed to envy their suits, you men who want to walk around with a tight suit on, with a tie, you know, um, trying to appease these people. You envy these people. Envy is just going into that jealousy. Jealousy is you wanting something that someone else has. You want to wear that suit because you want his business. You want to have the same kind of business. And what a business is built upon all types of wickedness. That's why you don't envy that. You don't want to dress like these people. We have our own dress code. We wear garments, you know, embroidery, embroidered garments, you know, beautiful um, garments and, and things of such, you know. We wear meat trees on our head, you see. This is our dress. That's why we don't envy them because we have our own. And ultimately, it's better. Our women, you want to have the long yellow hair, bone straight yellow hair, but you was born with a, a dark, dark Fro, you know what I'm saying? Curly, kinky hair. You know, most of the people of our nation are born with the same hair, man. Dark and kinky, curly, you know, thick. Not bone straight, flat, and yellow. You know, that yellow hair, that's um being unclean in the scriptures. But you envy your oppressors, so you want to be like them. You want to walk in their ways. You men, you want to walk around and Trim your beards off that the Lord gave you. He gave you a beard to grow. Why trim it off? Because the oppressors trim their beard. They walk around with no hair on their face. You know, just trying to look like, like they look like pedophiles, man. And our men, they follow that suit. They go on and do so. Want to walk around um, and lower your voice and keep your tone down. Be less of a man. You see, because these men are effeminate. The so-called white men, they're effeminate, man. And all these other heathen, heathen nations as well. They want you to not be so manly. We're born manly. We're, more, we're born with our looks. We have dark skin. We're, we have broad shoulders. We're burly. You know what I'm saying? We're the men of men. But when you envy thou oppressor, when you envy your oppressors, and you want to be like them and being jealous, you turn yourself down. You see, you always turning yourself down. That's because you're not comfortable within yourself. And we'll hop back here real quick into the definition. someone to feel distressed, anxious, or uncomfortable. And that's the issue. You're uncomfortable in your own skin. You're uncomfortable with your dark, curly hair. You know what I'm saying? That the Lord gave you. You have woolly hair. You know what I'm saying? You're you're not okay with your beard just growing and you're looking um you're looking manly, burly. You see? Cause they make you feel uncomfortable because they're walking around with their faces shaved. When they walk down the street, they walk in, you know, all effeminate, you know, tight short tone and little bitty t-shirts and you know looking like a woman so you're uncomfortable looking like a man you know baggy clothes however it might be whatever it might be that's actually of our nation you're uncomfortable wearing so you don't want to walk around with your meat tree on you women you don't want to walk around with your fro you know it's your beautiful fro you want to walk around with yellow hair that's bone straight that don't even look right on you you know that's unclean to the lord you see, you want to walk around. You don't even want your dark eye colors. You know, you want blue eyes. You know, and some some of some of us get it. So you know, not not saying that, but I'm just saying like, you will go out the way to get get contacts or get a surgery, get your eye color changed because you're uncomfortable with your own self. You're uncomfortable with your own beauty. You're depressed. You're 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 um you're just you you're done. You're oppressed. And the scriptures are telling us to envy thou not the oppressor. And it says, and choose none of his ways. So we're not even supposed to choose none of his ways. What are his ways? His ways, his methods to, to obtain the stuff he obtained is through murder, through robbing people, through raping. Everything that the scriptures are against. You see? Riches got by deceit. That's why we call these people the devil, man. Because we know they're the devil according to the scriptures. But that's how they move. That's why we know the so-called white man is the devil. Because what they do is they deceive. They have deceived you. They have deceived you from understanding who you are. They named you a Negro. They named y'all Latinos and Native American Indians. 
we should deceive you away from being and understanding that you've always been the people of the book. Because that's all devil means. The devil just means to deceive. They're the deceivers. It's that simple. The so-called white man is the devil. You know? And the scriptures are telling you, so he envy not that man. Envy thou not the oppressor. And we know he the oppressor because he's who's in charge of the world. He has the authority to, um, to um, influence all these things upon us. For us to be um, drunkards. They put a liquor store on every corner of our neighborhoods, right outside the schools. They have the authority to do so. And that's keeping our people oppressed. You know, you wake up in the morning, they go get a bottle first. Well, you're supposed to praise the Lord first. You know, the brother Shariat did a beautiful lesson on that earlier. You know, you're waking up and you're going into the ways of the oppressor. His, the ways of the oppressor is to wake up and, you know, go kill somebody, go murder somebody through all their ways, however it might be, to influence somebody into an adultery. You go wake up in the morning and do an Instagram post because you just, um, you know, took somebody's wife or something. You know, you're supposed to thank the Lord first and foremost and carry on in the ways of the Lord. But we're not doing that in these days, right? When we haven't been doing it for a long time. But envy thou not the oppressor. Why? Why should we envy not thou the oppressor? Because the oppressor has... Uh, a rude awakening coming from. You see? And it says, and choose none of his ways. You have to choose to go dye your hair blonde. You have to choose to detone your voice and act like these ones and laugh at their jokes. That's a choice, man. You have to choose to want to go to them to go um, have their kind of lifestyle or go get their cars or whatever it might be. Because we don't even want cars. We want chariots, man. We want royalty. We want the earth. It ain't enough, enough money you can give to a real man of the Lord, man. You can't give me enough money. You can't sell me out because I know what I deserve and what I'm worth. I know I'm an Israelite. And I know I'm God's chosen people. You see? Envy thou not the oppressor because they're not true. They're not on your level. And they never have been. It's all been deceit. Not walk in their ways. Choose none of his ways because they're going to destroy you. Right? Um, so real quick we we'll hop here as to why you don't you don't want to envy your oppressors. This is Job chapter 27, and we go start at 13. And it um you know gives you a clear reason, you know, there's just one reason why you don't want to envy your oppressors. You don't want to be jealous of these dudes because that's not your portion. Your portion is to be above all these men, you know, and it's written that we will be. It was just we're in a time. We have to come back to who we are. We have to um, lock in and take hold of our true destiny. Job chapter 27 and 13. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors. So this is the heritage of oppressors. He's going to lay it out to you. This is the portion of them with God, which they shall receive of the, of the Almighty. So the, the Almighty being Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You see? This is what they're going to receive of the Almighty. And the child is going into prophecy, something that is going to happen. It was said that it's going to happen before it happens. This is what we're waiting for. If his children be multiplied, then his being those oppressors, those oppressors that you should not be envying. Envy thou not the oppressor. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword. What is the sword? The sword is a killing instrument. That's what you do with a sword. You kill. You destroy. So if his children be multiplied, if you have more children, it is for the sword. It's ultimately for them to be put to death. And his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. They're not going to be eating, man. However you want to look at it. Spiritually, physically, they're not going to eat, man. They don't exist already. They're already gone. It says, those that remain of him shall be buried in death. So the remnant of him in that day, the day of the Lord, when Yahweh Shai comes back and he's taking back the world into his hands, you know, he's showing his power. Those that remain of him, those oppressors, you know, because this is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors. This is what this is. It says, those that remain of him shall be buried to death in him. It's a lot. 
It says, those that remain in him shall be buried in death. It's just that simple. That's the portion of them. They're buried in death. They're not going to survive. They're not going to exist. They're not going to be on the level that you're on. They can't obtain that. And his widow shall not weep. It says his widows. His widows are those women. The women of that nation. The widows of the so-called oppressors. The people who are oppressing us. Not so-called. But the widows of the so-called white men. And the, um, he, these heathen nations that rule above us. Their widows are going to be around. They're not going to weep. Because, for one, ultimately women are set up to just go with who is in authority. Women just, they, they live under the, the role of, of authority. You know, they're subject to men. They should be. So they're not going to weep when their men go gone. Because we're the true men. You know, women naturally want some men. You know, and if those women that's left, they don't want, if, they're not, they, if they are weeping, they're just going to be put to death, man. But it says his widow shall not weep. It's that simple. You know, because those women, they already not with y'all, man. They looking for, they, they want men, man. And in that day, the men of the Lord, they're going to stand up and we're going to be that standard. And the whole world is going to bow down to our feet. It says, though he heap up silver as the dust, the oppressors, the so-called white man. You see, though he heap up silver as the dust, he heaping up silver. They in the ground mining in tunnels digging up all the gold, all the diamonds, all the precious stones, all the precious metals, the oils, whatever they're heaping up, the stuff that we are can use. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay. Him preparing that raiment as the clay. You know, what do you do with clay? You mold. You can make anything out of clay. That's how they do things. They make these uh, machines, these buildings, etc. They prepare raiment as the clay. They're able to do things as they will, as they please. And they heap up all of the goods out of the earth. It says, he may prepare it. Yeah, you oppressors, those who are oppressing us today, you may prepare it. That's what you're doing right now. You're heaping all of that stuff up, putting it up in good place. You know, you're preparing it. It says, but the just shall put it on. So the just man, the just men are the men. Um, it says, I mean, so like the just men are the men of the Israelite nation who are going, who, who Yahweh Shai, are going to um who Yahweh Shai is going to set up the elect men of the Israelite nation who are going to survive through all of the calamities that are slot survive through Jacob's trouble you know be put on those chariots come back and we're going to be put in position to govern this world that's who's going to put it on after they heaped it up did all the work we're going to put it on that's going to be ours ultimately it's going to be our possession we're going to take hold of that thank you you know you did all the work but this belongs to us, and it always has. And it says, "And the innocent shall divide the silver." The innocent being the people who um forsake, the, who forsook in their um lives and came back to their true heritage, you know, and walked in the true statutes and judgments of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know, and forsook all the sin, forsook their sins, stopped sinning, you know, and came back and served the Lord. The innocent shall divide the silver. We're going to have all that abundance. You see. We're going to have all that abundance. It's going to belong to us. This is their heritage. This is the heritage of oppressors. Why? And this is why. It's a lot. This is why you don't want to envy these dudes. That's why Proverbs 3 and 31 says, Envy thou not the oppressors and choose none of his ways. Because ultimately, we're going to um, reap all the benefits of this world. Those of you who, um, those of you who um, maintain and survive through these times. That's why you don't want to envy these dudes because you've always been above them. You've always been better than them. I'm going to hop here real quick. In Micah. This is Micah chapter 2. And we start at 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon those their beds. Those people in authority. Those who's in their beds devising iniquity and working evil. You see, upon their beds, because they're in their rest right now. They're in the lofty places. They have the authority to sit back and make laws and um, set us up to do more wicked, set up the Israelites to keep on being led astray. It says when the morning is light, they practice it. They practice it. They practice these things. They do all of this wicked. They set us up to go on into further destruction. It says because it is in the power of their hand. All right, when we go back into that word authority, right? Which those oppressors must have. They must have the authority. 
It says power to influence or command thought, opinion, or behavior. You see? The president's authority. You see? They have that authority. They have that power. They, they do these things because it's in their hands. And that's only for a certain amount of time. Because it is in the power of their hand. They have that authority to do so. That's why they work in iniquity from their beds and practicing it and doing it. And setting you Israelites to go off astray. Setting you Israelites to want to have rainbow hair. Setting you women up to want to have blonde hair that looks like theirs. Because they know that's destruction. They know they're going to be destroyed, man. It says, and they covet fields and take them by violence. What does that sound like? How is America's, um, the so-called America's taking over? So-called white man came over on the boat. They seen the land was beautiful. And who was here? The Israelites. And they coveted the land. And they just took it by violence. They like, oh, we go come kill these people. We go bring guns and we go shoot these people up, bring um, disease and all types of things. We're going to destroy these people and take them by violence. It says in houses, the houses of stock, that lineage, the lineage of the Israelites. And take them away. Where are the so-called Native American Indian people and the so-called Mexican people, so-called Latinos in America today? Where are they at? This land used to be theirs, you see, and take them away. It says, so they oppress, you go that word again, oppress. So they oppress. Who did these things? It's so easy to pinpoint who that oppressor is. So they oppress a man in his house, right? They oppress a man in his house. The so-called white man did so. They came and took this land from the so-called north, the, like from the northern kingdom. You so-called Latinos and so-called Native American Indian people, who is in fact Israelites of the northern kingdom of Israel, you see? So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage, you see? And you, where's your heritage at? Where's all of the Latinos and, and so-called Latinos and so-called Native American Indian people who know the Israelites, who haven't had the the, the mess beating out, beating out of them, who their leaders wasn't destroyed and taken down and put in captivity, you see? Where the heritage would have actually laid. Verse 3. This is why, again, envy thou not the oppressor. Why? Because therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, behold, against this family do I devise evil. Because the Lord devises evil against that family. You see? It is that plain and simple. So I back Proverbs 3 and 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. And this is um, the icing on the cake. I'm going to um, close it off here. Revelation chapter 12. It's a lot. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. You see? And this is, again, some actions of the oppressors that you want to envy because they're going to pay a recompense for what they've done. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So who is the man who led someone into captivity? The so-called white man led the southern kingdom of Israel, a.k.a. the Negroes, the so-called Negroes, so-called black people. He led them into captivity. And the scriptures say, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So those men who led, those oppressors who led the men of Judah into captivity, they shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword, who took land by violence and killed a whole people that were living here in a place called North America, the so-called white man. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And that's why when we go back to um, Proverbs 3, 3 and 31, it says, Envy thou not the oppressors and choose none of his ways. Because it says, here is the patience. We need to be patient. We can't follow their ways because we need to be patient and we need to stay diligent and be learning and building in this spirit and growing and um, building our nation to be prepared for the day of the Lord. It says, here is the patience and the faith. The faith is us living by something that we can't see yet, yet we know it's going to happen. That's why we need patience and faith so we don't get sucked into the oppressor's yeah. world, get sucked into the oppressor's system. You're sucked into wanting to dye our hair blonde and be like these people because ultimately it's to your own death. It's to your own destruction. 
here's the patience and the faith of the saints. The saints being the Israelites. The Israelites, the people of the Israelite nation, the men of the Israelite nation who forsake, forsaken this world and have come back to their true heritage and have followed diligently in the way thereof. Right? Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Because those same oppressors that led into captivity, they're going to go into captivity. Those who killed with the sword, they're going to be killed with the sword. And we're going to um, take the kingdom back. And this earth is going to be ours. And we're going to rule. Um, we're going to rule forever and ever. So I'm going to close out here. This Proverbs chapter 3 and 31. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Because, again, we have so much more coming. There's much more than I can explain in any lesson. You know, and it's unimaginable, truly. But um, with that said, I'm going to say, Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to close out. Shalom.